What is up, family and friends? Welcome to another Family Bible Study. TJ here, kicking it off. And um, I'm going to be diving in into uh, good old James chapter 5. And we are going to be moving on today because in the last two broadcasts that we've done, we've stayed on the same group of verses. But this time we are, we're going into... Uh, going into some some uh, new territory and it's extremely um i would say life applicable like all of everything is life applicable but um you'll see what i mean and it's all it's something that uh we will 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 hit and we'll talk about but it's something that um you want to take your own time and really soak this uh this next this next section in um, and I'm telling you, it's just huge. So, uh, for you guys who are not familiar with the Family Bible Study, if this is your first time joining on, uh, welcome. And, um, of course, with this is a live broadcast here on Facebook, but also I put it up on YouTube. We have a YouTube channel, which is the FHL Initiative YouTube channel. It stands for Faith, Hope, Love, which comes from 1 Corinthians 13, 13. For, get, for those of you who maybe were not familiar with that. That's where faith, hope, love comes from. And it says, that particular verse says, these three things remain. In other words, will remain forever. Faith, hope, and love. And the greatest of these is love. So anyway, that is a, a, a channel where, of course, you can see um, not just teachings and uh, broadcasts of things that I've done, but in the playlist section, there are lots and lots of ministries represented, and there are a lot of very important, very good life topics that you can dive into and you can um, soak in. I mean, I, there's just so many great testimonials um, on there. It's just encouraging. Sometimes I'll go back and watch it myself, and um, there's just something about watching testimonials. You know, in the world, they would call them success stories. So even in the worldly sense, there is um, something to be said about um, success stories raising your belief. But in the world of faith and in, in the world of Christendom, if you will, there is um, the same principle. And that principle is that, well, the word says faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. And so a testimony is not maybe someone preaching verse by verse, line by line, the Word of God, but it's still testifying what God has done for somebody. And it's still testifying the works of God and the goodness of God. And that puts inside of us, when we hear it, um, faith. It builds faith up in our hearts. And so, you know, if you're dealing with something right now, something very specific that you um, maybe have been overwhelmed with or it's been taking up a lot of your time, effort, and energy, your mental energy or whatever, and you need some encouragement, I mean, head over there and see um, if there isn't a playlist that is uh, specific to something that you're you're working with, something you're dealing with, and get your faith built up, you know? And if your mind's overworking on things, maybe because you're anxious or depressed or whatever the case is, in that particular case, get on there because there's um, uh, testimonials about people who have overcome anxiety and chronic depression and things like that and it wasn't because of their great willpower and effort it was because of what God did in them and through them and he's willing to do the same thing for you but um, it's important that we meet them um, with faith and that's what gives God the right to operate in our lives so with that said I'm gonna take a drink here let's dive in to James 5 now I'm on uh, I'm using the NASB 1995 version and um, let's see uh, we're gonna be in James 5 13 and that's where we're gonna be kicking it off today James 5 13 and James 5 13 says is anyone among you suffering I will just pause there. There's a lot of different ways to be suffering. Sometimes you can be suffering because someone else is doing something against you. You could be suffering, of course, um, physically from something. You could be suffering mentally because of something. You could be suffering oppression, 
um, whatever the case is, um, there's untold amounts of suffering, I guess, you know. So, what do you do? Well, he says, then he must pray. Is anyone among you suffering? Then he must pray. And that's such an insightful little term there because he doesn't say, All right, is anyone of you suffering? He should call his neighbor and his friends and they can all get together and sympathize for for your suffering, you know, because that doesn't really fix your problem. Um, it certainly assages our emotions whenever we're suffering to, um, you know, do that type of a scenario. And we've all done it. I mean, don't get me wrong. But it doesn't mean we should keep doing it because that's not going to solve the issue. So what should we do? Take it before the Lord, you know, and um, put it out there and say, Lord, look at this situation. Look at this. I feel this is wrong. Um, this doesn't line up with your word in your word. This is really important. Knowing what the word of God says about your situation. And if you don't know what the word of God says about your situation, then that's where we want to get into the word. And we want to make sure we do know exactly what God's word says about the situation so that we can take that before the Lord and say, Lord, you said this and I'm experiencing this. So this isn't right, you know, and we can take that to him in prayer. I think a lot of times people um, think prayer is um, or they, you know, boil prayer down to just this kind of religious activity or exercise or um, where it's just like, yeah, I mean, I prayed. They have to go say a whole bunch of words to throwing up, you know, kind of throwing up a prayer in the sky, but they don't, there's not really an understanding. Um, we could always come to all of us, a greater revelation of prayer. Don't get me wrong, but I'll put it this way. The more we understand um, who we are in Christ, that we are sons uh, and daughters of God, the more that we realize that he's listening and he's responding and he's, um, go, he's doing, he's, he's going to respond and when I say respond, he's going to um, work on our behalf in situations, then prayer becomes a whole different thing. Also, when we realize that we can talk to him, um, now he is God, you know, we talked last week about have the fear of God and um, how important that is. But with that said, he wants us to come to him and talk with him to, um, you know, to open our hearts up to him and, um, and then allow him to commune with us in other words impart in us peace patience right that's um philippians 4 6 it says that if it, you know be anxious for nothing but with in everything with through prayer and petition make your requests made known unto god and the peace of god that surpasses all understanding will guard your heart and your mind in christ jesus so I think it's important to realize that as we um, will renew our mind to what prayer is and, and what God's going to do with our prayers and so on, then we're a lot, this verse here that says if you're suffering, um, then you must pray, becomes a lot more appealing um, because it's not just like, you know, blowing you off. Well, then pray. Oh, great. You know, it's more like then pray. And you're like, yes, that's exactly what I'm going to do. That's the last thing that your enemy wants, your opponent wants. That, you know, that's whatever's against you. The, the worst thing that could happen is that you begin to take that situation before God. Because when he gets involved, because you give him access through prayer, um, that's where you start seeing things work out in your favor. A lot of times, not immediately right away, not overnight, um, but in the end, it always, I mean, it works out in your favor. So, so that's what the, what the Bible says, you know. Um, all things work together for good. Those who love Him and are according to and are and are called according to purpose. Okay. His purpose. So, that said, let's keep moving. Um, verse, well, still in verse thirteen, says, "Is anyone cheerful?" He is to sing praises. So I love singing. I'm not going to pretend I am a uh, should be going professional in singing. But I will say I thoroughly enjoy singing. And, um, you know, I have a pretty 
joyful disposition about me. And so I like singing. But here's the thing. He didn't say just sing. You know, you're singing the most popular song on the radio about who knows what out there um, because you're having a good day. He says he should sing praises. Praises. What is that? It's just recognizing um, that God is good, you know, and um, that's what you want to put in your ears. Um, and to that note, uh, you tend to output what you input. I think we all know that. That's a basic principle of, of you know, life, whether it be physically, mentally, spiritually, whatever. You're going to, you tend to output what you input. And so, um, the uh, music we listen to and the things that we uh, put in our eyes, what we might call your eye and ear gate, extremely important. Extremely important. If we, now this is 101 stuff I know for a lot of people, but it's so um, spottily practiced. Like most, there's so many people that I, I was. I mean, among the worst, you know. So I'm not here to criticize or condemn, but let me tell you, it didn't help me. Um, so when you are putting all kinds of just worldly, natural, filthy um, songs and movies and um, literature and all this different stuff constantly in your brain and in your mind, that's what's going to be coming out. And it also gives access for our enemy to get in there and destroy things that's why a lot of times people have such you know problems with anxiety and fear and depression um, and anger issues and so on and so forth and they can't really figure it out figure it out like why am I or they're addicted to so many different things um, why why is this going on well look at your diet look what you're eating um, that's that stuff has to turn into something and if it's filthy worldly devilish stuff then it turns into what it becomes is filthy worldly devilish bondage in your life in so many different ways like there's no way you can soak in the news all the time as an example and um, have just you know no fear no anxiety um, because it or anger or whatever the case may be um, because it's being trapped in that brain you know in that in our mind really um, so you just got to be specific about that so he says in this verse let us sing praises well if you're always putting in uh, good good wholesome worship music and <laughs> excuse me um, hold on okay we're back uh, you're always putting in good, wholesome worship music and things like that. Then it's putting, you know, and you still have to even worship music. You have to still kind of pay attention. There's good and there's bad. There's solical, um, it's all emotions and so on, worship music. And then there's things that glorify God. And we, all of us are wise to um, to check our diet on that too. But when you're putting things like that in and then putting it back up to God, Lord, thank you. I bless you. And I worship you. You're amazing. Thank you for what you've done. Thank you for all these things. Then that's um, a form of faith. And it allows God to get involved with our lives and just do that much more good for us. Because He, uh, the word says he inhabits the praises of his people, brings his presence to where you're at. And so if you want to... Um, you know, get closer to God, commune with God to bring his presence into a situation, whether it's a situation where there's fear or it's a situation where there's anything else going on. Um, just again, uh, depression, sickness, whatever, then just start worshiping him from your heart, you know, um, from your heart. And I'm telling you, it's an amazing thing. It's his presence will just come in and it, you'll get a different perspective of things because his presence changes things. Um, there's one verse that says we'll enter. Well, I think it's a psalm, but it says we'll enter your courts with thanksgiving in our hearts and into your courts with praise. Well, when we are praising, we are entering into the courts of God in heaven um, through our praise and worship. Now, that may sound like 
you know, way over the head of for maybe some people who, if you're not in the, the Word of God a whole lot, I mean, other people, you're in the Word all the time, you probably get that. But um, all I can tell you is this, is that the Lord hears us from heaven and his presence is uh, not just here, but our praises are there with him. They're getting up to heaven and you are bringing yourself before God whenever you are praising and worshiping him from your heart. Huge deal. So we'll keep moving forward. Um, 14 is if anyone, excuse me, is anyone among you sick? Then he must call for the elders of the church and they are to pray over him, anointing him with oil in the name of the Lord. And the prayer offered in faith will restore the one who is sick and the Lord will raise him up. And if he has committed sins, they will be forgiven him. Can okay, me pause it right there? So I got to practice this last week. Um, been overcoming some symptoms. Probably maybe can tell a little bit from my uh, voice here. But um, the point is, God has provided provision for us concerning health. Why did he do that? Because he wants our bodies, minds, spirits, souls. He wants us healthy. He wants us healthy. That is the will of God, is healthiness. And if you don't, if you're not convinced about that, it's very hard to receive by faith God's healing power um, because you're like does he want me to be sick does he not want me to be sick is he trying to teach me something through this sickness or whatever and um, you'll probably learn something and through the sickness if you're if you are recovering by faith there's no doubt there's always a lot to learn and um, as you are you know progressing but Jesus was never sick and God seemed to teach him a whole lot so we don't have to be sick for God to teach us things okay so you will learn probably again anything you do by faith even if God didn't want you in that situation even if you put yourself in a bad situation if you get uh, if you use faith to get out of it there's always things you can go back and you, you know it's God just redeems things that's what it is he's such a good he does such a good job of redeeming and what I mean by that is taking a bad situation and creating good out of a bad situation that people think that the bad situation was his original plan it wasn't very often not his original plan at all it's just that he turned it around and so then people make a theology and they go oh he must have uh, wanted that to be the case in order to um you know teach me these things and get me into this part of life or onto this path or so i could meet these particular people or whatever the case may be and no he um, often didn't want us to go through any of that suffering, but sin in our life allows for suffering to um, enter in. You know, sin in the world around us allows for suffering to enter in. That's why we're so big. I talk all the talk about this all the time about keeping sin out of our lives. When we identify it, we exonate it, we get it out, because that's what allows for um, sickness and so on. And of course. You know, if you're going through a sickness or something like that, um, you're like, well, I don't know that I did anything wrong or whatever. Trust me, there is usually lots of doors that we've opened in our lives, whether it's being something we listen to or a prideful attitude or arrogance or, um, you know, we didn't, uh, we weren't prudent. That, you know, maybe Spirit of God is saying, don't do this, you know, get some rest, um, don't look at these things, whatever. And, um, you know, like I said, watching the news and all these different things and just opening our minds to all the stuff that allows evil to be inputted into our lives. But the point is that um, if we will listen to God and say, you know, constantly in terms of what should I do, what should I not do, and we make those adjustments, he'll walk us around a lot of those things. Um, well, he'll walk us around everything that he doesn't want us into, obviously. But what I am saying is that a lot of times we don't do that. And so it gives a um, it gives an open door for sickness and things like that to uh, to come in. Doesn't mean like, you know, some kind of evil, horrible person that's doing evil, horrible sins or whatever the case may be. It had nothing to do with that. But there is something to be said about taking personal responsibility and saying, hey, look, you know, this has got into my life and I'm going to step up and stand up 
and with God's help, um, we're going to get this out of my life by faith and whatever other things that the Lord uses um, in addition to that. And like, and I say that because, you know, it could be medical help, it could be medicine, it could be whatever else he uses alongside of your faith. But whenever we're like, oh, like, you know, pull a Job, you know, I didn't do anything. That's what Job was saying. I didn't do anything. This bad stuff has come onto my life. And I, I don't, you know, I, I just want to talk to God about this. You know, I've been wronged here. And um, at the end of the day, we find out that Job was living in fear. And fear gave Satan an opportunity to access Job's life. And that is such a parallel for so many of us. Job's, um, we talked about this a couple of times ago, uh, Bible studies ago, Job took Job's credit. What he did not do is um, what, you know, his wife told him to curse God and die. He didn't, he didn't curse God. He didn't uh, separate from God. What Job did do that was not to his credit was that he wanted to talk to God about how um, God has, had wronged him because he hadn't made any mistakes and um, he was righteous. And the fact of the matter is that he, he was the one that allowed Satan in, okay? And so that's the, it's just so, it's just such a parallel for um, human beings today. It's like, if something's wrong, it's gotta be somebody else's fault, you know? A lot of times we don't always wanna look in the mirror and go, hey buddy, that's on you. You know, but if you're willing to do that, then you can confess it, confess your sin. First John 1, 9, I think. Um, if you'll confess your sin, he's faithful and just to forgive you your sin and cleanse you from all unrighteousness. And so that's a great place to look. You know, if you're, if you're experiencing some types of symptoms or whatever the case may be, say, hey, have I done anything that's been allowing this in? Here's another reason that's important. So you don't allow it in again to be able to identify how did this get here? You know, because as a child of God, my body is the property of God. Okay, that's um, what the word says. You're bought with a price. And um, I'm trying to remember exactly where that's at. But um, maybe First Corinthians 6.20, I don't know. But the, the bottom line is it says you were bought with a price. So you are not your own. And, in the, and that your body and the spirit both belong to God. So if that's true, then sickness disease all that stuff has no right to be in the body of some you know my body or yours if you belong to God it doesn't have a right to be there this body belongs to God sickness you can't be a part of a body that belongs to God get out you know so that's our, that's our thought process because that's the spiritual reality so here's what you want to find out you want to find out what do I need to do to make this problem go away, disappear. Lord, what do, what, do you, what do I need to do? And then you want to listen and allow him to um, communicate that. And sometimes it's through other people. You know, you'll have someone talk to you or a family member or whatever the case may be. Have maybe a pastor or a minister or just someone you know. Um, sometimes he'll give you an impression inside your heart and, te and you're like, oh, you know, something will come to mind that you need to do. Or whatever but he doesn't the Lord does not want us sick and he has provided through Christ for us not to be sick that was a reason that Jesus was um, beaten and whipped specifically he, he went to the cross for our sins but he goes he was beaten and whipped and scour scourged um, violently and brutally and grotesquely um, so that we don't have to walk around in bodies that are sick and beat up um, he also paid for our mental healing. He also paid for our, our solical, you know, emotional heal healing and so on. He's already paid for all that stuff. I mean, it's not going to be paid for again. It's been paid for. That's great news for us. I mean, if you are dealing with something physical, just know your healing has already been paid for. And so we just have to learn how to access what's been paid for. So, all right, let's keep moving forward here. Um... Oh yes, so it says here, if you're sick, then you must call for the elders of the church. Now this is important because it didn't say, if someone is sick, let the elders of the church call upon them. What, what's the difference? Well, faith. If a person is sick uh, and you want to just go and pray for them, you're, a lot of times what, what we've done, I've done this for sure, is try to force our 
our faith on people you know we're gonna force our prayers on you and you're gonna raise up but that person isn't in any faith themselves they don't have any faith they're not operating in faith so therefore um, it's almost like our prayers have nothing to latch onto inside that person in other words let me paint the picture this way let's just say someone is totally disrespectful of God they're not interested in God and they don't believe in healing and so um, they're like you know sick and they're like whatever I'm, I'm gonna get better I don't care okay and then you are a believer and you're like you know what I'm coming over there and praying for you so it's, they're sitting there with their arms crossed great you know great are you done are we finished here great get out of my house um, well does that scenario make you think that that person is gonna receive from God you know probably not probably not in most vast majority of cases now of course God can do different things as a sign or a wonder or whatever the case is but normally speaking that's not what that's not the way it works especially within the church what the church is based on is faith in God and faith that God will do what he said he will do so when we are sick we get to call on the elders because it demonstrates our faith I believe that God will heal me so I'm going to I see here in the word what I need to do when you reach out to the elders of the church they come over or they are you know get together with you or in the church wherever in faith so you got people in faith on both sides of this equation going to God about it and then God is able to intervene and he is able to heal us and that's the way that works so we got to be careful not to force ourselves on people <clears throat> okay moving on um oh yeah it says then we must call on the elders in the church and they are to pray over him anointing him with oil in the name of the Lord now you know that there's hopefully you know it's nothing magical about the oil um, by any stretch because Jesus lays hands on people all the time throughout the word and they are healed with that oil and other apostles and um, people do as well but it's in there for a reason and so what the oil represents is the Holy Spirit and the power of the Holy Spirit um, being administrated to that person as a point of contact and uh, there's other things that it means too I'm not trying to try to be exhaustive about it because I don't know them all but I can tell you this it, it is uh, demonstrates what's happening in the spiritual that's what the oil is all about is that the power of the Holy Spirit is anointing this person and that power is flowing through their body and it is kicking out the sickness it is kicking out the disease now it says when that's done that person will be um, healed and it says in fact in 15 in the prayer offered in faith in faith not just prayers that are just thrown up I can't tell you this enough one of the most damaging mindset things in the world because people were you know and I, again I'm saying this from experience we all have done this I'm sure but just there's no faith there's nothing and we're just throwing up prayers and so um, they don't get any results so now what do we think about praying like it sometimes it works sometimes it doesn't it's kind of like eh, you know flip a coin and so we just throw up a prayer and then we go do what we're gonna do to fix the problem is what ends up happening but when we have taken the time to soak in the word that we and we've taken the time we've heard from God you know we have an, imp an impression in our heart like for example in this case um, the uh, this person who is sick here knows that the Word of God is true they've reached out to, to the elders of the church to um, receive uh, prayer they believe that they're going to be healed so when you have that type of a scenario then you're gonna see results but when you have a scenario where it's just like ah, eh, you know flipping you don't you just don't receive results and um, it's 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 just not good it's just bad all the way across the board so anyway all right let me keep moving forward here um, it says the prayer offered in faith will restore the one who is sick and the Lord will raise him up and if he has committed sins they will be forgiven him okay now one of the key things that the Lord taught me um, a number of years ago is 
Don't ever put the word immediately in the scripture where it doesn't say the word immediately because most of us have this mental tendency to um, put the words immediately anywhere that there's a promise from God. Anytime there's a promise, we throw in the words immediately. Sometimes God works immediately. Sometimes he works through a process. And um, if it's going to be a process and you're expecting it's either immediate or nothing, then what's going to happen is your faith is not going to stand the uh, test of time. You'll give up on your faith and the power of God is going to be short-circuited and you're not going to get the results you want. And I'm, again, lots of experience with that, um, unfortunately, which is why he had to tell me that. You know, don't put immediately where I didn't say it's going to be immediate. So when a person is prayed for, um, I'll give you an example. There's a, a, a one of the pastors in the church that I attend. She is a, a gal and she had a 15 pound tumor in her body and it was like in her stomach it looked like a baby you know like people were always asking her if she's pregnant and um she eventually got serious about like you know had it for nine you know a bunch of problems like this for like nine years anyway um she eventually um got tired of it and started to seek god for what was wrong and you know what needed to happen so she could be healed and so on and she spent about a year doing that of just cleansing things out of her life and she found out you know the Lord starts showing her stuff you have a lot of self-hatred you have a lot of um, uh, just fear just different things that need to be your unforgiveness that's a big one you know um, unforgiveness will let all kind of terrible stuff into our lives and anyway he starts helping her clear this stuff out of her life and as she's getting the sin out of her life, it's not, it's not letting the devil have a foothold, right? And then eventually, as she's reading scriptures on healing, and she's confessing scriptures on healing, like she's, you know, um, getting it inside of her, it, it came to a point that she realized, like, oh, I'm going to be healed. Like, I'm going to, I'm, I'm going to be, like, I'm healed. I'm a healed person, you know? And so she did this. She went to the church and allow the elders to anoint her with oil and pray over her and when she left that church she was still just as sick as when she walked in and she had a ton of problems but two weeks later two weeks later um, she's sleeping one night and you know goes to bed with this 15 pound tumor in her stomach and um, and also was like you know adjusting her spine where it wasn't uh, curved correctly and all this different stuff and she woke up the next morning and it was gone. I mean, you can she show that I was um, watching a, a sermon just the other day and she was uh, showing the x-ray pictures before and the afters and stuff like that. And um, and one night, you know, it wasn't one night. It was a, a process, but in one night that uh, tumor disappeared. But she specified and she's, she, you know, really hammered on this is that whenever you have made that that you've prayed and you receive it you believe god like this is this is going to happen um there's something inside of you a not mentally not that you've convinced yourself like i'm convinced but just something inside of you that if there's a revelation that um that you are uh whatever it is whatever the problem is is taken care of then from there on you're just standing in the gap between a you know the uh amen of your prayer you know you said amen and then there it is like it's actually manifesting there is a gap in between the prayer and the manifestation and i don't you know you very often don't have any idea how long that gap is but your mentality must be i don't care how long this gap is i'm going to have the end result of what the Lord has promised me and you'll have it you know you'll have it the Lord will come through he's always faithful so just want to remind you to um, never put the word immediately where God doesn't put the word immediately in the scriptures because it will ruin your faith stand and so I want to make sure I mention that and um, and it does say the prayer offering of faith will restore him who's sick and the Lord will raise him up and if he has committed sins, they will be forgiven him. And so again, you see once one more time that sin 
is connected with um, well the sickness because in order for this person to be healed the sins needed to be canceled and that's what God's saying is hey if this sickness uh, came around because of sin well then uh, the prayer of faith is going to cancel those uh, sins that's essentially what it's saying here it's going to cancel those God's going to forgive those sins they're be they're void and now and therefore this the sickness no longer has anything to cling on to um, as far as like the spiritual side of things and so it allows for the spiritual uh, because that's what God is right God is spirit it allows for the spiritual power of God to work in our bodies free of sin and um, and heal our bodies and so it doesn't you know um, well we'll just leave it at that because that's pretty straightforward and so uh, a lot of times condemnation and guilt is the uh, a reason that people allow sickness and things like that to continue in their body you know they feel bad for whatever number of reasons like oh yes I have been sinful yes I did this to myself um, you know yes because of my lifestyle now this has happened you know you, because I was a smoker for all these years this cancer is a, is a valid reason for this cancer to be there or because I lived a promiscuous lifestyle you know these um, sexually transmitted diseases are in my body now and you know I did this to myself hey look that's what Jesus died for <laughs> literally the reason he came down was for our really dumb decisions and our bad decisions and our mistakes and so on and so forth um, was to pay for that stuff and so he wants us to turn away from those things and not do them anymore because they're going to hurt us but he certainly doesn't want us walking around and allowing those things our bad decisions to keep us um, in a position where Satan is destroying our, our lives through sickness disease um, repercussions of you know bad decisions or whatever he uh, he, he already knew you're gonna make those mistakes let's put it that way and that's exactly why you sent Jesus to die and to resurrect and to also be uh, the intercessor between us and God you know and so your sins are uh, forgiven you in this in this particular passage when we are before you know before the elders and uh, confessing our sins and so on and being anointed with oil and that and so that way we don't um, it's such a beautiful verse in scripture because that way we're not sitting there um, thinking we're disqualified for healing because we were the ones that brought the problems on ourselves. so what a merciful God we have he is amazing that he's provided all of this for his children I mean it's just amazing that uh, you want to talk about parents preparing for their children God has done the ultimate job preparing for us his children in the sense that he's already paid for every problem we're gonna ever have every sickness we're ever gonna have every disease that we ever could contract everything he's already paid for it and then you can um, read about that first Peter 224 specifically says that you know by Jesus stripes we were healed um, and that harkens back to Isaiah 53 and um, that's where all you know talks about Jesus um, suffering and um, suffering for our not just our sins but especially like Isaiah 53 4 and 5 how he was um, suffering for our uh, iniquities and our um, and the chastisement of our peace um, is on him and um, and the physical um, I mean what he essentially talks about what he went through was specifically to pay for um, these things for us and guess what that's not gonna change it's already done so we just gotta learn to take advantage of it alright that's gonna be it for tonight um, appreciate you bearing with me a little bit as I um, I'm talking through some of these different things, getting to practice them for sure this last week. Praise God. He's so good. But I will um, leave it at that for now. And um, we will see you next time. Remember, God doesn't owe you anything, but he loves you. And he has done more for you than anyone else. See you next time.
If you have found this teaching helpful, consider subscribing to the channel and click the notification bell. That way you'll be alerted whenever new content is released from the Faith, Hope, Love Initiative channel.